Hey guys, I'm Brad of Brave the Woods, and uh, again, I'm super happy to do this uh, for you guys. Again, we're doing an art demo slash interview, but this time we're going to be doing it with my good friend Jason Karn. Uh, he's an amazing letterer. Uh, he does uh, very ornate lettering, or um, I guess you could call it uh, decorative lettering, and uh, amongst other things, and he's a designer as well, and I'll let him introduce himself a little further, but... Uh, I've always been super impressed with his work. He's actually done stuff for me and I've done some illustration work for him. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, he's, he's really, he's a really cool guy, but I really appreciate the, the time and talent that he puts into the, the lettering work that he does. So I'm excited to show him off a little bit and let him teach us some things. And, uh, here is, uh, Jason Karn. Thanks for the nice intro, buddy. Yeah. As, uh, Brad said, I'm Jason Karn. I'm lettering artist from Kentucky, formerly of New Jersey. And, uh, I'm here to show you guys how to draw a proper S today and do some embellishments and flourishing and all sorts of fun stuff that makes those letters look oh so special. So, uh, (laughs) yeah, who doesn't like letters, right? Well, see, the thing is, is like, yeah, we, I, I love letters. I just feel like, especially when you're doing an S, you said, I feel like that's one that a lot of people struggle with, including myself. If I'm trying to freehand an S, that's probably the last one I want to try to freehand. That one in an ampersand, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's one of those tough ones with those compound curves, which makes it kind of tricky. That spine is the thing that seems to throw a lot of people off. Yeah. Um, it's it's like that's the, the final boss of lettering, kind of. It's like <laughs> you start off with your, your H's and I's and then your rounds, like your O's and C's, and then you get in your diagonals, which are a little dicey, and then <laughs> S, S is the big bad at the end of the level, kind of. So we're going to deal – so what you're saying is we're going to deal with the boss first. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. We'll have to get ready for this. No, I'm, I'm excited. And I, I really, like I said, I'm really happy that you're, you, you agreed to do this with me. I'm really appreciative of that because uh, like I've, I've really admired your work. And it's, it's a style that's so far out. I mean I do some lettering, but mine's very playful, of course, and more loose. Uh, but yours is a lot more traditional, uh, ornate. It, it's just it's – just, it's just masterful. So I, and that's, that's something that's so far out of what I do and, uh, I respect you for it. So I'm glad, uh, you're going to take the time to teach us some things and, uh, yeah, let's, let's get started. And, uh, do you want to just tell us a little bit about what you're going to go over today? Yeah, for sure. Um, so right here, the orange letter that you see, the S is from a currently unnamed, unfinished typeface that I'm working on. Um, and just the, the orange part is the base letter itself. And then the two circles, the smaller one is the thin point width and the bigger one is for the thicker width. Um, So typically in my work, a lot of Roman lettering has this thick and thin quality to where it's not the same weight throughout a character, but you want to have your two extremes kind of consistent. throughout. I'm I'm glad you're doing this because I actively avoid this. I'm like sans serif with like completely mono width. That's my jams. Uh, Oh yeah. Yeah, like a lot of the times, a lot of people like to go for the more geometric sands. Like that's definitely the, you know, most popular thing right now. Everybody's rebranding with something that looks like Futura or Gotham or something oh, like that. I just saw something that went. Yeah, my wife just showed me something that she was looking at, and I was like, really? It had such really cool. It's almost like a. It's like a night, kind of like a seventies. Like what is that? Copper plate or Cooper or what was that one? Not copper plate. Oh, not copper. Cooper. 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 Not copper plate. And uh, it just looked really cool. I had some cool swashes and things, and they went to like a super sans serif, and I was like, oh, all the characters gone. <laughs> like it's not approachable yeah. anymore. Yeah, that's everything lately, especially with all the high fashion brands. I don't know why they're all ditching like these classic logo types they've had for forever. Yeah. For these kind of like I don't know, just bland, forgettable kind of <laughs> logo types. I think, but. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's a trend. It'll go back the other way at some point. I hope (laughs) it'll swing back. Let's hope so. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so yeah, some of the subtle nuances of the S that you have are that the bottom and the top of the letter should kind of overshoot the baseline or cap height or X height a little bit. Like a lot of the other round characters in the alphabet, they have to appear, they're mechanically a little bit bigger. So they optically appear harmonious across the, the whole typeface i feel like um, now well, quick question on that yeah I, sure. I, I'm gonna, it's gonna take forever i keep cutting you off i'm so okay. in, i'm really interested in this because like so t- but first let, so people know you are a designer were you a designer before you were a letterer yes actually i did a lot of um myspace layouts was how i actually started and then i got into like band merch and doing t-shirt design and things like that 
And I eventually fell in love more with like the band logos and the type that I was working with than the graphics. Oh, so that okay. switch kind of was like a gradual thing I just faded into. So is that design background, does that influence at all your your type? Your your I mean your your way that you approach lettering? Not as much as you'd think it would, like, especially because a lot of the music that I started off with when I was designing and a lot of the stuff that I listened to was like really heavy, aggressive, like metal, hardcore, punk kind of stuff. Which I don't get I do from your work. This, <laughs> no, and then a lot of the stuff I do is like this classic Victorian kind of yeah. really proper and yeah. So there's like this weird disconnect from like me, the person and me, the designer, I think. I mean, everybody can see all the, 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 what, how many of the thousands of LPs you have behind you? Yeah, it's creeping on 2000 at this point. Jeez. Yeah. So <laughs> that's so awesome. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. So I, I, I'll, I'll get, I'll, I'll get sidetracked completely. So you see like on the top, there's like this overhook of the S to where it like curls down. Um, and that typically in most typefaces that, um, are, are using like this thick and thin Roman style, like it does not go to the far right of the, the bottom curve of the S. That's because it'll appear too top heavy optically and it'll look like it's kind of leaning forward and falling. So you kind of draw oh, that back a little bit to make it more balanced and weighted in the center. That um, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those things like once you actually see it and know it, like you're like, oh yeah, that, that totally makes sense. Like it's one of those things that I used to just draw it total width, you know, everything. Yeah. I was like, yeah, it has to be as wide at all points, but it doesn't look right sometimes when you do that for some reason. So um, the trust your eyes more than <laughs> the measurements yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Like even the stuff that we were talking about before, like the like geometric sand stuff, like Futura Gotham, like it looks like it's mono weight, but it's not necessarily. Like the horizontal strokes are actually about like somewhere between like 95 to 98% the thickness of the vertical strokes. So it appears like it's all the same weight. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's like a little trick of the eye to – make you feel like it's it's this mono weight sort of thing if it actually was it would look wrong it would look like the weight is inverted that's crazy so it's kind of i guess it's like when you have like yeah when you have your s's and your o's like kind of those rounds like the they'll they'll typically peak over your the the total height of your right the the height of your letters the most of your letters they're it's gonna it's gonna approach or creep past that right or yeah, is, that, is it under that's exactly right yeah and All the right. same with like uh like if it at the top of an A, if you have like a point up there instead of like a flat top A, that'll probably go a little bit above as well. Oh, okay. Um, so like same with the V, if you flip it, like that point will dip below just slightly just to optically appear the same weight. So there's only like these little kind of optical illusion things that you have to remember and learn as you go through when you're building out these typefaces. Yeah. Um, but that's huge. But, just knowing that yeah. those exist even, I think that'll – that really, I mean, that'll change how your stuff looks pretty drastically. Like they're little things, but I feel like you look at some type and you just don't understand what's wrong with it. Cause like, it just feels weird. And then someone does like one little thing and breaks all the rules. Cause in my mind, I'm like, it's got to stay the same. Everything has to be the exact same. I so, okay. It's been a long time since I've done, uh, like type courses. So X height's the center, right? Is that, is that the X height or is that the, t- is that the top? X height would be the top of your lowercase characters. Lowercase characters. Okay, so that would be... Right, the cap okay. height would be the top. Cap of your height, okay. Case. Yep. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm using the right terminology. So, yeah, the cap height, it'll go above that and, yeah. Yep. Make more sense. Yeah, ju- yeah just slightly, for sure. Um, and then with these these terminals on the right and left here to where, like, they have these angled kind of cutoffs, mm-hmm. they don't necessarily have to be the exact same angle. With this one, optically, it just felt a little bit better. You can see that this one has <laughs> a bit more of a vertical angle to it. This is giving me anxiety. <laughs> uh, I, I, this is, like, the perfectionist in me is, like, stressing yeah. out. No wonder my letters look yeah. so – I always, like, defer to, like, really playful letters because I'm like, I give up. I don't even know how to do this. I know, look right. I feel like – most people would want to just like do this and like bring this in like a little bit. <laughs> I like, would a hundred percent. Like I do yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. But for some reason it just didn't feel quite right when I was building this one out. There are cases where that is how I develop it, but sure. not on, the, not on this one. So um, now that you see like, like the base of the S and you can see how like this thickness kind of carries through like consistently the whole spine. Um, I'm going to show you what I'm going to actually do with this is going to show you how to embellish and build upon one of these base characters with some kind of flourishing or scroll work or just general ornamentation. I might do some inline treatment, something like a drop shadow. We'll, we'll see. It's going to kind of be improv along the way. Oh, but uh, these 
gray swashes you see currently are just roughed in really fast with just the brush tool in Illustrator right now. Oh, okay, yeah. So you're not pointing and clicking for this. This is just a loose brush. Yeah, right? this is kind of just like a loose one that I have on like another layer that I have locked and turned off here. Um, so I can just set Got that it. to like our opacity and let me select these guys and drop that down a bit. So I have a a little bit of a guide to go off of for what I want to do here. Um, yeah. All that kind of stuff that I do is with the pen tool, and it's usually fairly improvisational. Um, and so what I do is I just start coming into here with my pen tool and plotting points while holding down the shift key to keep it at 90-degree angles. Oh, got it. That, okay. That is something that I learned, I think, from, uh, like, Bob Ewing, I think, is the guy that, that passed that off to the design oh. community as, like, this aha moment to where <laughs> if you put everything at 90 degrees, like, it just looks so much better. It's so much easier to manage. So, yeah. so each new point, like, when I plot it, I'm just holding shift down to, like, drag it out, you know, in either vertical or horizontal. Oh, uh, I get it, yeah. Um, because, like, if you start doing you know, something like this to where it's like slightly angled and then it's like a little bit harder to judge how this curve would go. Like when you just have them all at 90 degrees, it makes it nice and easy to manage. It might feel a little weird at first. I know it did for me, but it's it saved me so much time in the long run. And then you could kind of like just come in here and finesse the points a little bit. Like you could see where certain bits are getting blobby kind of like on this right hand side here. Yeah. Drag a little bit and then it starts feeling a little bit smoother. But you always keep those at 90 degrees. I do. I mean, if you... I'm sure you cheat sometimes, right? There are certain <laughs> occasions. See, like, this end termination Oh, here, sure, yeah. I didn't want it to go, like, right to... Yeah, you know, clearly horizontal. Kind of thing. For it sure. just kind of gives you a bit of a softer termination. And sometimes I'll throw in, like, you know, a little ball terminal sort of thing on the end of it. Okay. And, and that looks a little bit nicer uh -huh. when you when you bring it down into a ninety degree turn there, you know, okay, just the, yeah, like makes sense. into the curve of the circle. So I guess it depends on how you're going to be finishing it. Is like how you'll you'll treat that termination, but everywhere else is always ninety degrees when I'm doing this kind of ornamentation stuff. Dude, that's a, that's a huge tip. I would yeah, mine's all over the place, and I'm like, man, you know what I end up doing? You're probably going to cringe when I say it. I uh, I use the smooth tool. <laughs> I have never used that actually. Okay, try it right now. Just show me how how. Ter oh, do you know where it's at? Do you even use? It? Okay, no, okay. No, I'll, I'll, I'm going to switch to my screen real quick, and maybe right, let me see this. I'm going to see how terrible this is. Let's do this. So I'll kind of go like this. Okay, I don't know why I did that. That was kind of wild and out of control. Should okay. Let's pretend I was trying to do like a little curve, somewhat of a curve. It'll probably work better if I have more. It works better if you have more points. Um, yeah. Okay. So you see this one right here, the shaper tool. It's like, it's where your pencil is. If you go down to the smooth tool, so if you take it and drag, so click a bunch of points and you'll, you'll, all you have to do is like kind of click and drag over your points. So take that smooth tool, just make sure that your points, uh, that the little, um, Oh yeah. I you see, see what I mean? Doing. So it, it, it kind of guesses. Like it does a, yeah. It does a pretty decent job. It looks like of getting you nice curves but it the, does kind of like throw the points all over the line and you're you are losing that kind of 90 degree handle thing that that's exact that's exactly it It can do the thing that happens like i use it in illustration work sometimes when i'm building shapes like i just can't get everything to look smooth so every once in a while i'll just mm. hit it and the more you hit it the less um the the more uh, points it takes out oh, okay so it acts as like a simplified path sort of thing as well as it's yeah going. but it feels like you have a little more, mm. more of like manual control over it but Anyway, I'm not going to oh, sit cool. too long on this because I'm I'm doing it the wrong way. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go back back to you. <laughs> All right. So I started building in one of these these bigger curves over here, and then I'm gonna build on this one here that's gonna cut down to the bottom of the S. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and break my own rule that I just told you of like not using 90 degree angles. <laughs> yes, but when you're break joining to a path that's kind of like on an angle. It's really the only way that makes sense is to like keep it in line with the way that path was already going. Oh, okay. So like how you can see here, like how it's like just matching the trajectory of that curve essentially. Oh, um, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Like every point from there on would be handled in the same way with those 90 degree 
handles, but um, that first, that leadoff point makes sense to, to match with that line. So it seems like it's coming off of the same vine or branch, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I think that's one thing that I've noticed a ton. I mean, in my own, I'm not just calling everybody else out, but like in my own work, if I try to do these flourishes, that's really hard. And that's, that's, it's a good thing to remember for those making, doing these, because I feel like a lot of people just kind of jut them off. It's the same thing with like trees. I feel like when I'm doing tree branches, sometimes it just looks super weird when you have it jutting off in a random direction and it feels a little more natural and flowing. Like even if it's maybe not how the tree actually works or looks, it kind of feels just a little nicer <laughs> to be, have them kind of follow some existing path. Yeah, I bet that actually makes a lot of sense. I hadn't really considered it that way, but, um, I clearly I drop reading... more trees than letters. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was reading some calligrapher talk about the way that, like old school Spencerian script was developed and yeah. it was actually just through that guy, Walter Platt Spencer, I think his name was observing nature. And he like, liked these curves, like the way they looked in like water and wind and trees and things like that. Really? And a lot of it was just from natural forms is the way that he thought the most beautiful writing should be. So there's probably That's some cool. truth to like the branches idea and, and oh, things like that. Or... See, I knew what I was talking about. It's just I, <laughs> brilliant, <Did you> know? <laughs> just Did you exuding know? from me. Yeah, <laughs> that's hilarious. No, that's awesome. That, that's that, it. Totally makes sense because this stuff. I mean, it feels like it feels so foreign. So why why are you drawn to the very ornate lettering? Yeah, I think that's a, a fair point and something that I've thought about a bit too. Is like like why am I actually drawn to this? And I think that in a way it kind of is like that extreme music just in a, in a way different realm. It's like, this is the extreme version of typography and design. Oh like yeah. Everything was to the max. It was all dialed up to 11 with the detail and, and ornamentation and things like that. So I think I'm just kind of drawn to these elaborate over the top things, but like even in film too, like the most crazy, ridiculous sci-fi film is the stuff that I really love. <laughs> so you just like going overboard. I think so. You just like so. like with your with your collection of albums. I noticed you have a bunch of uh, what are those pop pop yep. characters behind you? <laughs> yep. well, how many do you have? Pops. How many? Hundred. Do... I'm not sure how many, but it, it's it's getting up there. They're so kind you... of taking over every shelf. <laughs> so you're just an extreme guy, is what we're saying. That's pretty. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's kind of dangerous whenever I get a new hobby because <laughs> then I know a bunch of money is just going right out the door. <laughs> oh my like, gosh, I can't imagine. <laughs> Yeah, like, uh, like like posters is another one. I've got to stop buying posters. I have no more Dude. room on a wall in this house, and I just keep buying them anyway. Yep, I'm there with you. I, that's why I, I have to keep buying flat file drawers. And I'm like, then why am I buying the art if I'm putting them just in flat files? Man, I'd, I'd really like to get a flat file. Actually, those are harder to come by than they should be. Oh, this that, it's weird, right? Like, There's like a shortage of flat file drawers, at least good ones. You can buy cheap ones. Um, yeah, I feel like every single person who collects posters wants one. By now, some manufacturer should have figured out that, like, hey, we should maybe make some flat files and make a lot of money. <laughs> All the ones I've ever seen, besides like IKEA ones, uh, which you know they do what they do. They're not that fantastic, but they're there, yeah. and that's what we use. And because they're not huge, they're they're small still. But like large flat file drawers, I've never seen one like past like the eighties. Made past the right. 80s. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know where yeah. they exist. I don't either. Like, everybody that I know that has one, like, got one from, like, Hamilton Wood type. That's, like, <laughs> 200 years old. And... Yeah. Or from, like, an old, old, like, yeah, like, architecture firm back in, yes. like, the 50s, 60s, whatever. Yeah, because it was technically, like, a blueprint drawer. Or something, yeah, that's, right? yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. But they're expensive. Um, if you find one, they're they're expensive. No kidding, dude. They really are. Like, at least 500 bucks. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a deal. Yeah, for sure. Man. So, when you're thinking about this... So, we're, we're doing digital right now, but typically, would you start... Because you, you drew this, you know, with the brush tool here in Illustrator. Do you typically start here in Illustrator, or were you doing that just for this uh, this video, and you typically sketch? It's analog. it's mostly for the sake of the video. Typically, okay. I will sketch everything with pencil, um, just because I'm kind of an analog dude. That's that's the way that I've always liked to work. I just feel like I'm a lot faster with a pencil than I am with a Wacom tablet or anything else. Oh man, I like hear it just, that. 
yeah, like the digital tools just don't feel as, as natural to me. Yeah. I've, I've gotten fairly quick with the pen tool, but that's, uh, that's one of the only ones that I'm pretty comfortable with. So it doesn't matter. Like, yeah, it, it's hard to like getting, I, I feel like I'm getting more and more used to drawing on a tablet, especially since the iPad pro came out that I'm finding myself like, I, do you ever feel guilty? Okay. For me, I guess I, I'm going to, I might just be, I don't want to deflect this on you or anything like that. But like for me, it's like, I feel guilty when I draw too much on the computer and I'm like, I should be drawing this by hand or I should, I should have a sketchbook filled full of my illustrations. And I really don't, I mean, I do it sometimes, but I don't have like this epic sketchbook full of my amazing drawings. It's all saved files or saved layers. I should say on like my iPad. Cause I love drawing. I like the ability to layer up things and drop color in super fast and tweak, play around with colors. Like that's like what makes me happy in the process. So sketching it isn't like it does it's not mandatory for me i guess i feel like to do it on paper is yeah, that is that I, crazy <laughs> i i wouldn't feel guilty about it if i were you like if it's actually like bringing you happiness to do it that way and it's <laughs> getting the job done for what you need it to do then hell yeah. yeah keep doing it see um, that's why i keep you and around i think it's like it's for the whatever tool is best for the project. Like if I'm doing commission work, that's a logo. Like I'm, I'm going to need to make it vector, you know, like I, it's just something I know I'm going to need to do, but if it's just some piece that I want to draw that I think would make a cool piece of ephemera or something, yeah. then yeah, I'll just like sketch it, ink it, throw in a Photoshop, beat the hell out of it with some texture and, <laughs> and then that's it, you know? So I think it's for just, sure. um, whatever's right for that, that particular time. That makes sense. So, uh, with this now, I've got these these bottom flourishes dropped in, but I think I want to go a little bit deeper with it. So I'm going to add some like spurs and thorns off of this kind of thing too. Oh, awesome! And I'll kind of show you how I do that. So yeah, like again, just going off of the main vine, like I just kind of come up here, do like one little spike, and just bring it back to the main stem, and just adjust this one node here, and then you get your little little spiky guy. Um, and a lot of the times these look better with, uh, like a rounded stroke just because like the really sharp ones tend to like not finish nicely. Oh, I see. Yeah. Reason. You okay. know, but the, the rounded ones just like soften it up a little bit and it just gives it a, a nicer edge for, for most things I find. I agree um, with that. But I do have I illustrations. That's, yeah. It's kind of down to taste, I guess. But it, it, for, for me, that is the way that I choose to do it a lot of the time. So I like to just do it in the openings where there's like not a lot of like curls and, and finishing ball terminals on it. So like you can see between these two uh, curls that I have here, like it looks like there's a little bit of dead space. So I'm going to go ahead and drop one in here. Got it. So this is just visually is kinda... spacing them out what looks nice and fills in some areas. Yeah, exactly. It's just kind of whatever seems to, to fit the space best. Like some of these, I feel like I'm probably going to um, cut to overlap behind the S, so I wouldn't really worry about dropping them in this space necessarily. Oh, yep. Just because it'll be a, a hidden area, but like right here might be a nice one. So I'll go ahead and do that. And one of the nice things about an S is that it's, for the most part, sort of like a mirror image like like the upper and lower halves you know for the most part anyway they're not exactly the same but this might actually look nice if i just duplicate this whole thing and flip it let's let's give that a look out of curiosity if i can grab it correctly <laughs> oh i'll flip it for the top i see what you're saying yeah oh yeah, yeah. I, yeah that, that, that could end up working pretty nicely once i like finesse this a bit more i think it'll work I mean, uh, that would definitely be what I would do, but I would cut corners, so that's why I would do it. But <laughs> <laughs> I could see, so, but yeah, I could see where you you might want to at least tweak it up a little bit, so there's not any weird tangents with like the terminals of the S's and things. Right, because like where that S kind of foreshortens a little bit on that top right, like it may not kind of hook into the same area as the one down here did, so it's, that might yeah. be a little funky up in this spot. So a little bit of customization as you go will probably be necessary. Yeah. So yeah, go go ahead and do your thing. Um, I was gonna ask you a question about. So you you run, 
Do you do you fully run uh, Carmel Type Co. or is that something you run with? Are you a co-founder of that? Uh, I co-founded it with Drew Melton, but he stepped away from the business a, oh, a okay. while ago. And yeah. it wasn't like a, a negative thing or anything. He was just like, I'm burnt for making fonts, man. I did like 10, <laughs> made, 10 in six months and – I'm sick of looking at letters and I just want to go make some other stuff now. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I get it. I get it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So, uh, so yeah, he, he co-founded it with me. I haven't done a whole lot with it lately just because I, I've had a day job for the last couple of years, which I'm actually leaving next Friday, which I'm really excited about. Nice. So I might get some time to come back in and develop some more type and sell some new fonts. I have, a bunch of fonts on my computer that are like 80% finished. And I feel that's really every type designer in the world. They like get <laughs> most of the way there and they're like, I'm sick of looking at this thing. I don't want to do it anymore. There's a lot <laughs> that goes into it. I hear there is like, it's not only the, the A to Z. That's the, the tough part is like coming up with a cohesive family, but then it's like all the programming, like the kerning between letters and, you know, alternates and ligatures and, trying to make sure that foreign accents are accounted for and that it has language Gosh. support. And... That's crazy. So, so you, I saw yeah. with that. Sorry, I keep cutting you off. Um, no, I was looking at, so if I was looking at the about page on your site, uh, which is a new website too, re- relatively new, right? A few months old. Yeah. I dropped that in, I want to say January. Yeah. A couple months back, whenever you did that illustration for me, that was probably January. I that mean, was I wasn't, I wasn't digging for a compliment on that, but thanks. <laughs> no, that was, that's what we traded off. We, we just, I did that illustration for you. And for, for those of you watching, I, and then he did, uh, he did some alternate logo work in his, in his, uh, more ornate style for our Brave the Woods logo. And it was epic. And, uh, yeah, it's really cool. So, uh, I, we, we like to, we, yeah, we've been trading some work lately and, uh, it said on there you, you do like a lot of display fonts. Now, can you explain yep. what you mean when you say display fonts? Those are kind of the ones that aren't, they're not more, more your workhorse fonts, right? Like you're not going to be dropping body copy with these. Is that right? No. Yeah, not at all. They're usually intended as like headlines, like a single line of type that needs to be like big, bold, eye catching, that sort of thing. It's not Extreme. really designed for like, yeah, not designed <laughs> for like eight point font, you know, like something that's going to be really tight and hard to read. Um, and I have a good respect for the people that do develop like body copy text faces because those are really difficult to make because okay, yeah. you're thinking in terms of like, how will the ink affect the paper at this size? Like that's not something that no, anybody really cares about on the display type, Yeah, but, like ink traps and, you know, exaggerating certain forms to like make sure when the ink bleeds a little bit, the letter still looks right. Like that's Crazy. stuff's really tough. That's, that sounds um, intense. Yeah, that's like almost scientific. That's that's, <laughs> that's pretty daunting. So that's why it's um, like when you find a good workhorse typeface, you kind of I like I'm always like I I use that 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 font for like a lot of different applications cuz I just love how it reads, but uh same thing with display fonts though. I mean like I I've had free I you know, I've clearly downloaded free typefaces in my life, uh, especially starting out. I, I like to buy them now because I recognize the quality that comes by purchasing them and the, and the work that, and the talent that goes into making them, they obviously should get paid for it. Um, but I've noticed, you know, like there's like some weird tracking issues and kerning issues between letters. And when you're trying to, when you're using some of these, are they just like, or they're all the exact same height? Like they're all ma- like max out at the cap height and just the things that we've been talking about. There's a huge difference. So I guess I'm just saying that because not, not trying to push your fonts in particular. Your fonts are amazing. You should definitely check out carmeltype.co. Um, but also just looking into, paying for type like just you talking about how and how much goes into this with with me like i'm kind of somebody who will sit there and tweak it for forever until somebody tells me to just release the damn thing so so hopefully when you're getting one of my fonts they're about as perfect as i can make them and i think that's really why i really like doing this like it's um it's really satisfying to try to figure out and reverse engineer something like type design and do it right and try to figure out like all the the best practices as you go along. I feel like every time I develop a typeface, I'm learning something new that I didn't know last time I did it. Yeah. And that's just really satisfying. (laughs) You do a lot of research though. Like how I, I don't feel like there's a lot of, 
like college courses and things like that that are teaching super heavy ornate lettering. I feel like this is more like a what do you call it? You're like an apprenticeship type of thing that you would have to do, or just a lot of self study. Which what, what, so how, how did you get in? Like how did you learn? A lot of it was just self taught, but there were a lot of people that I talked to along the way that were sort of mentoring me, or if I had really nerdy type questions like, you know, what does this kind of um, like Aganek, which is like like a, a foreign oh my diacritic character look like, you know, in this language, because I'm not sure if it'll read like that in Icelandic or something like. Whoa. <laughs> I was like, say, are you speaking English now? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. But there's people yeah, so, that you, you talk to that helped. Yeah, for sure. And there are places like Cooper Type at New York that still do typeface classes. And uh, there's like Type at Paris, which is another really good one. And okay. it's it's expensive and it's really niche and it's kind of hard to find people that still teach this stuff, but they do exist out there. And if you join forums for um, – there's a program called Glyphs that I use for all my typeface development. And they have a forum where the guy that actually developed the software uh, is in there all the time answering questions no for way. people, which is awesome. Like he gets back to people usually same day, even within the hour sometimes. Um, so any question that I've ever had asked, it's been answered pretty quickly there, which is pretty yeah. nice. Yeah. So, so there are people out there, even if you don't like directly interact with them, like you can use these forums and meeting yeah. and gather grounds for that. So if someone was to say like what some, well, maybe some of our viewers here are wanting to get into this, uh, without saying, without just handing out your email and saying, talk to Jason, uh, how, how, like, where would you point them to like really learn this more ornate style, more traditional style? Um, a lot of it's kind of just personal research and finding great artists, like people like Dave Smith, that Victorian glass artist in, in the UK. Yeah. His work is just mind blowing on another planet. I think he's one of the best artists living today. Like just really sitting there and dissecting what he does. Yeah. Like if you really just like pour over it and immerse yourself in the details, you'll be like, Oh yeah, that little detail is really nice. And the way he tucked that leg of the R into this shape, like looks really cool. And I see why that works and just getting ideas from people on Instagram or Pinterest or dribble is a good starting place. Not, not to say copy or mimic what they're doing, yeah. but it'll at least give you, uh, a good insight into getting started into that world. Um, another really great resource would be uh, the Type Hunter. He has this Pinterest page of thousands and thousands of old pieces of ephemera and packaging, and and it's all this Victorian era stuff, and it's gorgeous. I'll have wow. to find the actual link for you. Uh, yeah, later. please do. Yeah. Um, he's. I, I don't know if he still uploads it or updates it, but. It, the archive's still up there, and there's so many things. Like, you could just go through it for days and days and not even make a dent. That's crazy. So it's, so it's a lot. It's a self, you pretty, you have to be pretty self motivated to get into this. It's not I think just, so. a, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's one of those things that I think you'll find out pretty quick if you're passionate about it or not. Like, sure. It, like it, most I things, I guess. It, yeah. 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 Do you have, uh, uh are there any, online classes that you've taken or or teach or if you haven't if you don't teach them maybe you should teach some <laughs> yeah i haven't yet skillshare reached out a couple of years ago and i wish i would have took them up on that offer because it seemed like i missed out on but on said, has someone else done it yeah. like, i haven't even checked is someone, is someone else doing this more ornate style on there i don't i don't think that necessarily what i teach is on there but I feel like I kind of like missed the boat. It's so saturated at this point. Like, like, is there even room for me to like get a decent amount of students? And I don't know. I think, I think that, well, it's, I feel like it's, that's the same. If that was the case, then I wouldn't be on you. I wouldn't even do this YouTube channel. You know what I mean? If, if you're, if you're worried about saturation, you know, I mean, like, I guess that's kind of, that's like our world now. Um, but I feel like if you have such a unique, like, gift for this i feel like it might and and if they're that that's like a real niche that there might be some people out there that really want it and i noticed that like you don't need a ton of people like especially even like youtube stuff you don't need like a ton of people you just need your niche 
and uh, you get some really like active followers of what you're doing. But without without preach, I'm not telling you that you have to do it. I'm just saying, I, I would uh, I would say there's still definitely room for you on Skillshare, on YouTube, on Teachable, that where you can host your own classes, like any of that stuff. I feel like um, it would be nice to to hear from someone because I, I I don't see it a lot, but I'm also not looking for it, so I don't know if there really gotcha. is a huge you know archive of of awesome teachers online for this type of yeah. style yeah i'm not really sure i mean now that i'm going to be going back to freelance i might have, have time. time to put together a course <laughs> and, and see what comes of it yeah they're definitely you know it, it could work out <laughs> i'm not yeah I'm, I'm not uh i'm not ruling against it or anything yet but um <laughs> I'm not like it, it's, a, it's a big commitment to like do it like a whole course it's, it's probably very much I'm, so i'm sure you had to go through it when you're doing your workshop like it's it's probably a yeah. lot of prep and planning it is. Um, so it's just like finding that downtime to to be able to put that curriculum together or whatever you got to do. Yep. It'd be, it's like building a typeface, I guess. Like there's a lot of little things and you'll sit there and pick away at it forever and be like, oh my gosh, what if this person has this question that I should probably throw in this? And then you have to just realize how much you got to, you, you can, you could, you could put everything in that one video or you could split it up, which is usually the better option. And, uh, yeah. That's why I was really excited about starting to do these, and I was really happy last, you know, the last time we did this with Joel uh, Santana doing his illustration, and then having you on here for this. Like, I'm just, uh, I feel like this is a cool way, even if, especially if you haven't taught before, like on a on a online course, to kind of get your feet wet into it and just share what you know. Because a lot of times, I never know what to teach until some, like a lot of people. Uh, will start asking or requesting something of me. And I'm like, Oh, I didn't know you needed to learn that. Like I never even thought to teach that or someone mm. will watch me working and they'll be like, wait, how did you do that? So this is kind of a, that's what I'm doing to you right now. And I, I if, if nothing else, this is going to be awesome and I'm glad it's out here and people can see it. So, and learn from you. Yeah. Glad to do it. Um, well, I did the top and bottom here now and, yeah. and I didn't do the lazy way. I didn't flip it. <laughs> I noticed that you said you kept tweaking it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So I have both of those now. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and do a bit of that, that over under thing that I was talking about before. Oh yeah. Show us that please. Yes. So kind of so, weaves in. Yeah. I'll put, let me just put a color into this. So it's a little bit easier to see what's going on and I will just ditch the stroke on that too for now. All right, and then I will lock the S for now. And let's see, how do I want to handle this? It's usually when I'm doing these overlap, it's like every under, it's like over, under, over, under, over, under for each thing. So it looks like it's got like this consistent amount of going behind, coming in front sort of thing. Oh, got it, yeah. To not like drop everything behind, but I get think that. You, yeah. Um, all right. I'll yeah, go ahead. That. Yeah, go ahead. Keep play with that. So you, so a lot of you, so you, you said you're going to go off and you're, you're quitting your, your day job, going to be doing this. Are you going to be, well, what type of, so you, you've clearly been doing enough of this on the side to be able to do that. Um, and, and run this. What type of clients do you get? Like, what are they requesting of you? Is I know you do like, uh, like I've seen you do things like, for alcohol bottles and things like that, where this fits really nicely with that, um, you know, that very ornate style. W what else, what, what other types of things do you get requests for? What type of type of companies do you get coming, reaching out to you? Um, I actually have quite a bit of stuff lined up right now, which is a, a nice, That's great. <laughs> it, it is nice. Yeah. Um, it, more than I've had in quite a while. Um, so I'm doing a rebrand for a century old coffee company, which is, Oh, that's going to be killer. awesome. Like I'm really excited about that. I've got a logo for a health network lined up. I've got a rum label, a tequila label. Um, I'm doing like a cover report for shareholders for this liquor company. <laughs> it's it's oh, wow. kind of like this wide range of stuff going on right now. Yeah. But a lot of what I do is print design. Okay. So that's going to be like labels, packaging is, is kind of what I'm, getting the most requests for lately. Yeah. And then after that, it's kind of like the branding logo sort of world is what I'm in as well, which is fun stuff to do. I really like that kind of work. Yeah. And you're clearly, yeah, you're clearly good at it too. So I, uh, one thing with, with print, like this is like, 
I, I noticed the print jobs, especially on alcohol bottles and things like that. You have some like embossing and and you know like some um, what do you call that? It's a letterpress and all sorts of crazy like uh, print techniques that are going on. And there's foil. How how do you manage that in your mind? How much of that's like going on? When you're making your files here, are you thinking about that? Or is that stuff that they're like, hey, you can make that layer or this stroke uh, foil? Is that, is that How much of it goes – like thinking goes into that beforehand while you're creating the the lettering? I'm thinking about it pretty early on. Okay. I, I don't really like let, let on with the client exactly what I'm thinking for like print and production stuff yet because sure. I don't want them to get like too far ahead and be like, oh, that's <laughs> going to be too expensive. We don't want to do like this die cut with this foil and then emboss and – like, like, cause I know that can seem kind of like scary up front to like spend that kind of money. Yeah. It's but expensive. once you show them on like a mock-up, like a beautiful, like 3d render bottle kind of thing, and then they get it and then they're like, Oh yeah, we need to do that. <laughs> That's so smart. Kind of let, like wait until like the last minute and be like, this is what you need. <laughs> I like, like that. Yes. Yes. Let's do that. They're like, I can't, I can't <laughs> unsee that. It looks yeah. so amazing. I was so you actually. I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask you anyways because I think everybody should know. What do you use to mock up uh, your, you know, to mock up things like like packaging and things like that to to pitch to a client or to show off in your portfolio if you don't have a great photo of it or is there something um, you use? Yeah, currently, if I'm just looking for a mock up for something that's kind of like a basic standard package, like a square box or like a, you know, just a straight liquor bottle, yeah. you can find that on sites like Yellow Images or Graphic Pair or something like that. You can get a really nice mock up for like 10, 15 bucks. Okay. And it's, it's well worth it. It's like one of those PSD smart objects where you just double click on a layer, add your artwork, save it, and then it just updates on the bottle and it looks awesome. Like all the lighting's there. It warps it around it like it looks killer. Oh, sweet. So that's a nice, cheap, quick, easy way to do it. But I've also been getting into Adobe Dimension lately. Yeah. And that program is wild. That is. I've dug into it since you've shown it and I was blown away. I don't even know where to yeah. start. It's so awesome. It's going to be a, a game changer, I think, in the world of like mock up design. Because I did that um, Moonbeam box. It's one of the projects that I have up on my site and Instagram. But yeah, I got I got hired by a company to do a packaging job for like an Art Deco cannabis thing, and they liked it up until the end. And then they were like, uh, "Good work. You gave us what we asked for, but we're just going to do our own thing anyway." <laughs> I was like, oh, "That sucks." I was like, "Well, I got paid, so that's nice." But yeah, I kind of wanted this thing to go out in the world. Like, I was pretty happy with how this thing looked. Sure, so it's, just, it's beautiful. Yeah. So I just like saved it, and then you know, came back to it a couple months later, and just put a new name on it, new logo type, and changed up some of the design elements. And then I decided to learn Adobe Dimension in a weekend, basically, and mock up all these boxes. And it looks pretty photo real. Like, it's if you don't have crazy. The beats, uh, print them actually and like get a photo shoot done like that's a very good alternative it's convincing it's it's extremely convincing if you i mean some of those like if you, you zoom in real close you can tell um but a lot of times there's no reason for people to zoom in that close to even tell like just edges i've noticed right. like you can tell a little bit but it's it's pretty amazing it's a really powerful tool yeah, I'm looking forward to getting like more acclimated with it with like more complex package shapes. Like I just did like a rectangular box. Yeah. I feel like that's like there's like no learning from oh, yeah. that. It's just like, oh, you just add your dimensions, then you slap the artwork on it and move <laughs> the camera around a bit. And yeah, but you have your lighting. I'm gonna options. be doing like a custom bottle and like seeing how like glass reflects and the light and I feel like that's gonna be a whole different beast oh, to yeah. tackle. But I'm that, looking forward to it. That's awesome. Well we'll come back and do another whole video on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so now I've got my over and under thing kind of done. And what I've done here is I've expanded the strokes so they're fills now. And I'm just going to merge all of these together. Oh, nice. And and now what I'm going to do is like all of these little thorns that I have, I'm just going to select the interiors of them and all the ball terminals. Yeah, all the counters to get out. Yeah, yeah and then I'm going to delete those. And then it just kind of gives you like this nice filled look. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that looks cool. Yeah, it just kind of finishes it a little nicer than just having them all open, kind of hanging out there. And it gives you the illusion that you've done something that has like a little bit more dimension than a monoline. You're right. Yeah, it does. 
So there's there's that guy. And then uh, what do you think? Do we have some time to do a little bit of a, like an inline treatment into this S or something too? Uh, yeah, if you can do it, I'll give you five minutes. How's that? All right, five minute challenge. Here you got go. it. Five minute challenge. <laughs> tell us, tell us the the things that we need to know about inline because I'm sure there's some tricks and I'm doing it wrong. Um, it's it's I'll, never I... <laughs> never easy. Okay, <laughs> what I'll say it's unfortunate but true, um, because the the stroke function only works so well. Like if I were to go into here and put a stroke on this and set it to um, the inside. Yeah. Like eventually it just starts looking wrong when it gets to like a certain size. Yeah. Like it's actually doing okay here, but um but like for this one I think I just want like a nice beefy gold outline and uh I'm going to make a duplicate of this cuz I'm going to use that as a as a mask in a minute. Um so I'm going to create a line here. That's the I don't want to make it the same thickness as all of these lines that I had. What was that? Four point. All right. So come over here and make a four point line. And I will drag up a copy of this. And I will use my, my favorite tool, which is the blend tool. If you just hit W and you click between two shapes that have like the same nodes and everything. Yeah. You can go up to here into these specified steps and make however many of these you want. And they're just equidistant steps. Perfect. Which is really nice. Instead of trying to copy, like, you know, <laughs> saves you a lot of time. The same thing over and over and over. And you can preview um, it. Yeah. Which is, which is nice. So let's say, uh, let's say right there, 20, 20 lines. See how that looks. And bring that over here on top of my S and then I will bring that to the front. And then while selecting both the S and the lines, I'm just going to hit Command-7, and that gives me a mask on just these lines here. So oh, awesome. See what that looks like kind of lined up on that. I feel like those might be like a little bit too big is what I'm feeling right now. Those look way too heavy for me. Sure, yeah. So let's see. But those aren't expanded out, so you could just go in and edit the stroke, correct? Uh, that's, did you expand those? Are those expanded? They're not expanded, but the thing is with the, um, with the blend tool, sometimes you will get something funky that happens. Let me try to get back into this object. Come on guy. What are you doing here? Dude, I've been here. There we go. <laughs> I've been here. Yeah. So like when I go to edit this, um, Oh, okay, this is it's doing a gradient. It's, yeah. Because What's it's a it? straight line, it's actually taking it quite well but sometimes when you have like a different shape it looks a little uh, little wacky when you try to edit it while it's still in the blend mode so oh let's god see if okay. i just make this a little bit more a little bit more dense what happens slightly smaller line weight and more dense pattern i think i think i'm going to lock lock that letter and I'm probably going to let me see if I can change the the color while I'm in this too. Yeah. All right. I think if it was oh, that's sweet. Even like a gradient color there. I, I think, think it's... if it's something that was uh, like closer to black, so it didn't stand off so hard with the uh... ooh, yeah, kind of give it some. Kind of dimension too. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder how this would look going from like a dark gray to like a red it would look kind of nice. I think. Please. Like an orangey red. Let's see. All right, get back out of that man. You and your orangey red. If you go to his website, it's orangey. I wouldn't say orangey red. Maybe it's more orange. But I was like, I, oh, that see, that's looking pretty cool. Yeah, that's not bad. It's looking um, so better, now, way better, way better. Yeah, so now I'm going to make a duplicate of that S that was in the background and just paste it right on top but knock out the fill. 
and that'll like cover up all of those little uh, lines in the background that were kind of hitting the edge awkwardly before. Oh, nice! Wow, yeah, that's cool. I wonder what if it was just all that dark gray. That might be kind of nice too. Something that isn't so vibrant and kind of in your face. Yeah. Yeah, it's not bad. Oh, that's, that's nice. Not, yeah. yeah. It looks classy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A little bit of class to it. And let's see if we... Let's take it one step further, even. I'm going to... I don't know how I like that, though. Oh, I see what you're doing. A little bit of depth to it. Maybe if it was like a pretty soft shadow, that could be a little bit better. Kind of stands off a little bit more. Just a oh, bit, that's cool. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, and then if it did the same thing with this, let's see. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Drop it in the back. And hit it with this. i got to go all the way back with that one. <laughs> so I'm already seeing how you, you how you, what you were talking about. Like this could take a long time just because you like to play around and <laughs> fiddle with it. I, I'm the exact same way with my illustrations. Yeah. I'm always like I, I'll try to get mine done up for a client, and I'll be like, yeah, it takes me about an hour. And like four hours later, I'm like, man, I don't know. I should probably just do this one last color option <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. It's hard. Totally, man. I can I can imagine <laughs> yeah, with man. more details too that you put in because like you have like you love that ornate style that you could just endlessly add add to what you have. Yeah, it, it uh, it, it's good to an extent. I feel like after a while, like you're just kind of <laughs> kind of doing too much. Um, so I'm gonna use that blend tool again here and just give myself like kind of a solid like blend between those shadows. Uh, I'm not sure I really like that though. I think I kind of liked it when it's just just like a single, single piece hanging off. Yeah, gotta tuck that back in a little bit. Well, dude, All this right. has been this has been yeah. very enlightening, I will say, uh, and I'm I'm really happy. This looks beautiful, by the way. The the end result. Thank you. I was gonna show mine. Like <laughs> that's been one of the things I've been wanting to do. I was like, you know, I'm gonna draw alongside you, but this one. I didn't even attempt. I did. I tried to do those ninety degree uh, angles that you talked about, but I ended up just watching you because I was kind of mesmerized by what was <laughs> happening. And so I'm not going to show people what I did this time because one, I'm embarrassed, and two, I didn't get very far. Um, but yeah, dude, this is. Uh, oh, I'm going to get rid of this uh, right here. Okay, cool. So, dude, this is uh, this is fun. I, I'm really happy you came on here. What you did, uh, what you made, was uh, incredible, and and so many actionable tips here which i feel like people are going to really enjoy uh because this kind of stuff like i just i don't know about this at all really i know the very basics i did a lot of like i know how to ma i know to handle type but creating type is a whole different animal and i remember in school like one of the things that our, one of my type teachers would always say was uh like don't hurt type like don't like don't hurt the type <laughs> and that was like because we'd kind of just you know destroy it and and, uh, you know, it's obviously the opposite of what happened in, like, the 90s and things. But um, yeah. Don't squeeze it. Don't stretch yeah, it. Yeah, don't squeeze it. Don't <laughs> stretch it. Don't do all these things. But creating it yourself, I feel like that's cool. I think you get a whole new appreciation for what uh, the, type, the typefaces that you do use and understanding just how they work. And uh, this has been a, a master class in that. So thank you so much, Jason, for, for doing that with me. Oh, anytime, man. Thanks for having me on. This was fun. Yeah. And so as, as before we, we part, uh, is there anything that you want? So I, I'll, I'll put in the link below or not the link below. I'll put all the links below in the, in the bio here. Um, and just for, for your website, you'll have Carmel type Any anything else that you'd like to include. We'll put down there. Is anything else? Is there anything you want to plug or let everybody know before we leave or one bit of advice, uh, for, for those wanting to get into this that you can leave us with? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, Putting you on the spot. I, I mean, like, like, like mostly my, my thing I want to plug right now is, is my own website. Yeah, Just no, please do. back into freelance. I mean, a lot of people probably, if they do know me, know me as a lettering library guy, which is cool, but I also want to be the, the designer dude too. Sure, not so, just curating. Yeah, so go check out my website, jasoncarn.com. And, uh, and I know Brad said that 
He's not necessarily going to give out my email so everybody could shoot me a message and talk about type, but feel You'll... free to do that. I'm always down to talk shop. That's okay cool. if you want to. So hit me up if you want to talk about software, getting into it, where to find inspiration. Love talking shop and uh, love doing this. It's awesome. Well, thank you so much, and uh, and definitely thanks for everyone who's uh, who's watching this. And if you're, like I always say, if you're if you're new here, please subscribe and like this video if you did. And uh, uh, we do this every single week. Not not these interviews every single week. These are a little bit more uh, a little a little more special than than my typical episodes because I get to bring some some good uh, talented friends of mine on here and and talk shop, which is really cool and learn something new. So uh, stick around, subscribe, like, and uh, we will see you next time. Thanks a lot, Jason. All right. Thank you.